Formally, the Fischer-Snedeker distribution is known as the ratio of two chi-square distributions. A chi-square is simply that shape we just saw. When we take a sample and estimate the population variance and repeat this over and over, the distribution of those estimates are known as a chi-square distribution. So formally, we can write the Fischer-Snedeker as the ratio of a chi-square in the numerator with their degrees of freedom and a chi-square in the denominator with its degrees of freedom. But don't get lost in that notation. The chi-square is simply the shape of variance estimates. And so the Fischer-Snedeker takes on its particular shape because of the shape of estimating variances from a sample to a population. Let me show you what the Fischer-Snedeker looks like when we have the same number of individuals in our variance estimate one and our variance estimate two. So here is a Fischer-Snedeker distribution with 50 numerator degrees of freedom and 50 denominator degrees of freedom. Let's pause for a second and unpack what that really means. This is the distribution of a statistic when we take the ratio of variance estimates when the variance estimate in the numerator has 51 people in it and the variance estimate in the denominator has also 51 people. If you were to do this sampling experiment, it would look like this. We take a sample of 51 people, calculate a variance, that is use our sample variance estimator, then take another 51 people from the same population, calculate a variance estimate, and then take the ratio of those variance estimates. If we were to do that exact procedure millions and millions of times, the shape of those ratios would look just like this. And that's the Fischer-Snedeker. It is simply what would happen in nature if you were to take a variance estimate from one sample, then take another sample from the same population and form another variance estimate. This is simply the shape that would occur. Now, you might have noticed that this distribution of f is not symmetric. That is, we're not equally likely to get values above one as below one. So this distribution has skew, and that skew is related to the skew of those variance estimates. Remember, when we're taking variances repeatedly from a population, the distribution of those variance estimates won't be normal either. And the skew is going to depend on how many observations we have for each sample. So again, in the top, if we're taking very small samples, most of our samples will have very small sample variance estimates, but we'll have an extremely long tail. There will be times when we'll get very extreme or very large sample variance estimates. However, when we get to large samples, most of our estimates will fall, of course, around the real value, but it will fall off more or less symmetrically. These won't be perfectly symmetric. A chi-square distribution will never be perfectly symmetric, but the skew will decrease as we increase the size of the samples. So the shape of the Fischer-Snedeker distribution is really depending on the shape of those sampling distribution of variance estimates. Now imagine, instead of having the same number of people in our numerator and denominator variance estimates, what if we had substantially fewer people going into the numerator estimate? So in this case, imagine we have a sample coming from this sampling distribution, where we only took two people for the numerator estimate, and for the denominator estimate, we're taking a sample from this distribution, one where we have a lot of people. If you'd like, you can think of the sampling experiment like this. You and a friend are going to be taking samples from the same population. So the same population variance is what you're trying to estimate. You only get to pick two people, but your friend gets to pick 120 people. And every time you take a sample, because you're going to do this millions of times, what you're going to form, the statistic you're forming, is the ratio of your estimate divided by your friend's estimate. So your sample is really coming from this sampling distribution, because these are all the variance estimates you are likely to get when you take samples of size 2. Your friend will be taking an estimate from this sampling distribution, because these are all the sample variances you're likely to get when you're taking this size of a sample. So what you're really doing in essence is taking a random sample from here divided by a random sample from here. Just looking at the shape, you should be able to see that with all this skew, there's lots and lots of people clumped up down here at the bottom, lots and lots of variance estimates that you're likely to get. So you're likely to get one of the smaller variance estimates, and your friend is likely to get one pretty close to 225. So the ratios will typically be a smaller number divided by a larger number. And so the distribution of f that you're likely to form will look more like this, where you'll get many f ratios that are really close to 0 and 1. 
Now the average of this distribution, the mean, is still the same. You're still, on average, estimating the same variance. But because of the shape of those sampling distributions of variance estimates, the shape of the Fischer-Snedeker will change. So the Fischer-Snedeker is actually a distribution that changes shape quite dramatically depending on how many observations go into the numerator variance estimate and how many go into the denominator variance estimate.